For the BHS Stage 2 Teach Award, we'll be assessing the coach's competence in teaching novice riders of various ages who are generally riding for leisure. We'll want to see a clear demonstration of the knowledge and skills needed to deliver a teach lesson on the lunge, a lead rein lesson, a class flat and jump lesson and a basic stable management session. Throughout, we expect the coach to show safe basic teaching practice, to select and teach appropriate exercises to meet the lesson aims and objectives, and to deliver this in a logical sequence with consideration for the rider's ability and needs. We want to see the coach demonstrate appropriate regard for safety and safeguarding at all times, and to abide by the legal requirements for conduct and behaviour, with due consideration to risk assessment. In all of the observed sessions, we expect to see the effective use of verbal and non-verbal communication, including volume and tone of voice, listening gestures and body language. We'll also want to see good time management, with the coach recognising the need to demonstrate the range of their teaching skills within the allocated time for each of the different types of lessons. We'll expect a good understanding of the roles and responsibilities of being a riding teacher, Topics we may discuss include the health and safety of the rider and the welfare and safety of the horse at all times and how to assess, teach and develop adults' and children's riding ability. We'll also expect the coach to understand the value of encouraging lifelong participation in riding and horse care, to recognise how important it is to recruit new riders and nurture their interest and to have an idea how they might develop their own knowledge and skills. We'll also want to see the coach have a good grasp of the key factors to consider in matching horse and rider, including rider ability and confidence, body composition, type of horse and type of lesson being delivered. We'll also expect a sound knowledge of legal requirements of teaching riding, such as data protection, riding school licences, equality and diversity. We'll expect the coach to begin the lead rein lesson by introducing themselves to the rider and checking the suitability of the rider's clothing and PPE. We we'll then want them to explain that they will initially assess the horse or pony for suitability before they start the lesson. From there, we we'll want to see the coach lead the horse or pony in walk and trot to assess its ease of handling and its suitability for a beginner lesson. The coach will also ask the rider about their previous riding experience and how they're feeling about today's lesson. Next, we want to see the coach talk about the importance of being calm and quiet around horses, and then make sure the rider understands basic safe procedures before mounting. The coach might also identify key parts of tack and their function, and in particular, the connection through the reins to the horse's mouth. After that, we want to see the coach explain the techniques for mounting and dismounting, they might also demonstrate this to help the rider's understanding. We'll then want to see the coach teach the correct rider position and explain how to move the horse forward, slow down and stop, turn left and right, and ride circles or basic school movements around the arena. Depending on how the rider gets on, taking into account any previous riding experience, the coach will then progress to teaching the rider rising and sitting trot. At the end of the lesson, we we'll want to see the coach recap on what has been achieved, give the rider feedback on how they've done and outline what the next lesson might cover. We we'll then ask the coach to evaluate and discuss their own performance. This could explore strengths and possible areas for improvement, teaching practices, communication skills and lesson management. OK, Matilda, just tell me how you felt that lesson went. I felt it went really well. Um, she was a little bit nervous at the beginning, but I just had to convince her that I had total, total control of the horse. Uh -huh. um, and he seems a very quiet horse, very gentle, so he I does, wasn't concerned at all yes. about that. OK. For the lunge lesson, we expect the coach to demonstrate confidence and established efficiency when using the lunge equipment and controlling the horse. We'll want to see the session begin with the coach introducing themselves and presenting the suggested lesson names and objectives while they warm up and assess the horse. We'll expect to see the coach develop some rapport with the rider during this time 
and gather information about the rider and their expectations for the lesson. After giving the requisite attention to safe and appropriate mounting, initial warm-up and assessment of rider, we'll expect the coach to teach a progressive lesson using a range of activities and exercises. The lesson should meet the planned aims and objectives and support the rider's individual requirements. We'll expect the teaching activities to be appropriate for the current skill level of the rider and be delivered in a logical and progressive sequence. The exercises the coach uses should include ways of correcting and improving the rider position and developing the rider's awareness, feel and influence over the horse's way of going. As always, the coach must remain alert to the needs of the rider and adjust the teaching and practices accordingly. It's very important the coach uses the side range during the lesson and makes an informed decision about working the rider with or without the stirrups and or the reins. The coach will need to make this decision based first and foremost on their assessment of the rider's stability and security and then proceed only if they are sure the exercises will actually help improve the rider's overall performance. The teaching skills described in the lead rein lesson will also be expected by the candidate in the lunge lesson. For this part of the assessment, we'll observe a 45 minute lesson for three or four novice riders who can walk, trot and canter and jump fences up to 75 centimetres. We'll want to see this session demonstrate the coach's ability to warm up and assess both horses and riders, then progress to teach appropriate activities to meet the lesson aims and objectives, with appropriate exercises being used in a logical sequence. As with any riding coaching, we expect the coach to assess and improve the rider's position, control over the horse, and their influence over the horse's general way of going. The session should include teaching of riding school figures and explanation, demonstration and feedback. We then expect the session to progress to basic jumping instruction. This could include teaching the jumping position, maintaining balance and forward position through the various paces and transitions. Next, we want the lesson to progress through the appropriate jumping activities and exercises to improve the horse's and rider's confidence, knowledge and ability. This may include pole work, grid work, related distances or a small course. There will be help on hand to place poles and fences, but the coach must maintain a clear plan of position and distances. We are then asked the coach to evaluate and discuss their performance. So Katie, uh, I'd like you to show Julie how to put on and adjust the rug for comfort for the horse. Yep. Next, we'll observe a practical stable management lesson. We'll expect to see the coach demonstrate the appropriate stable management skills, such as safe horse handling, use of equipment and basic health and safety. Typically, we'll expect to see the lesson begin with an introduction to the subject and reference to safety procedures when around the horse followed by a demonstration of the specific task with discussion on key aspects and tips. Then moving on to encourage the learner to have a go at the task themselves, followed by feedback, evaluation and repetition if necessary. Again, at the end of the observation, there will be some discussion and self-evaluation. For every session, we'll expect the coach to provide a lesson plan and risk assessments updated on inspection of the venue and facilities on arrival. In discussing the teaching and learning, we'll expect the coach to be able to talk about the needs of different types of riders, for example adults compared with children, and physical development such as stamina, stability, suppleness and mental development such as confidence, motivation and concentration. We'll also expect the coach to know how to produce an action plan for their own professional development in the equine industry, with reference to short and long-term goals, smart targets, continued professional development opportunities and progression to other equestrian disciplines. <laughs>